Day 6, the High Man's Challenge, Dreams. Hey everybody, it's from Media World. It is day six of the Hard Man's Challenge. Now, what I just to do in this video is pick a dream sequence from a television show or a movie that um, is funny or is horror based. And I had a good look from a collection, and there is actually doing quite a few dream sequences. Some really good, some really really bad. And I decided to go with um, two movies and a um, television show. There's lots of others which are, I think we all know and many have already said. But uh, these ones I think some are quite funny and some I think are quite daring. So yeah, let's straight to it. Uh, an obvious one I think we all might know is is Dumber and Dumber. It's the uncut version. Really funny film, hilarious. Uh, Jim Carrey, man, fantastic. Now the scene I think we all know is uh, Jim Carrey as character, Lord Christmas. Uh, he falls asleep on the wheel and he's kind of dreaming this kind of really ridiculous dream about him going back to his love and return the briefcase and all that. And he kind of pictures himself as this really funny macho guy and makes everyone laugh and with his bad jokes. And it's just a really well done funny scene and I think it's just great. Uh, the film itself is hilarious. And, you know, I, I just thought I that scene was just really, really funny. So, yeah, dumb and dumb, good stuff. Uh, next one is... Um, a television show called uh, Dexter, really fantastic show. I seriously recommend this uh, series. Really fantastic stuff. Um, it's a bit of dark comedy, you know, violence type stuff, drama. Really fantastic. Um, season seven. It's going to be on September in America. Really looking forward to that. I think it's going to be really fantastic, and I'm really excited. So yeah, good stuff. Now the sequence I want to talk about is I think it's I think it's like. Last episode, or close to last episode, it's a bit of a spoiler, I apologise if you've not seen the series. Um, and it's the scene where he's thinking about uh, kind of turning himself in as the Bay Harbor Butcher, and he's thinking about maybe uh, uh, maybe Deborah doing it. So he brings Deborah over uh, to get some steaks and some beers and all that stuff, and he's kind of picturing his mind, you know, how he would say it. And it's just a really well funny, really, really funny sequence. And he's going to picture stickers on the Big Hollow Butcher and he's just picturing Deb's reaction throughout the entire process. And there's one where she's bursting out crying, another one she's basically pulls out the gun, shoots him in the head. I thought that was hilarious. There's another one. Uh, just, there's, there's, there's multiple different reactions. There's one where she kind of chokes on the steak and all that. And he's kind of picturing how, how would she react. And I thought that was a really, really funny sequence. It was dark, but it was, it was done right. And it was pretty, it was, it was pretty cool. cool. See, Season two was a really fantastic season, and I love that moment. You know, the uh, that sequence. I thought it was really, really funny, really dark comedy stuff. Uh, really good stuff, Dexter. Definitely recommend if you haven't seen it. So yeah, good stuff, Dexter. Uh, next one is uh, a film called Fourteen Oh Eight. Um, I actually think this is a genuinely good film. It's a Stephen King based uh, adaptation novel. I actually thought this was a really good film. I really enjoy this movie. Uh, some people hated it, which I don't understand why, to be honest. Like, I, I can sort of see in a sense, but I think it was just done really, really well. Now, there's a dream sequence in this, which is really daring and really ballsy, you know, no pun intended. And uh, basically, he's in the room, it's a demon kind of room, and it's, it's like some, nasty, some weird, nasty stuff is going on throughout the entire room. And. Um, uh, he basically uh, kind of punches. I think he like he knocks down this painting, and it basically the entire room gets flooded. And he wakes up back to the beach where he surfed in the previous scene in the movie. And we're thinking, like, there's a dream sequence. He never went to the hotel, kind of thing. And he's kind of like, the, I think for about five minutes or so, um, we're kind of led to believe that it's, he's back, you know, on the world. And he's gone like. Um, you know, he's, he's he's trying to find the place and doesn't exist. One thing he goes back to his wife and he's trying to make it with her and all stuff. And he goes to the post office and he realizes, shit, sure, I'm still in this dream. He's still in the room, kind of thing. And basically, all these build, all these like builders, knock down the entire like you know, um, uh, mail room, mail office type thing, post office type stuff. And uh, he's yeah, he's back in the dream again. And he's just, but it's just done really, really well. It's 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 like first I was thinking. Ho, ho, ho. That, that any other circumstances that would have really seriously pissed me off, but it was done really well. And um, the scene that came after it, where he saw his uh, like a spirit version of his like dead daughter, which I thought was really sad and really uh, symbolic. And um, she t basically turned this moment and stuff. She turned to the ash. And I love the sequence where he kind of like uh, you just hear that like din 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 because he's got like um, so many hours. I think he's like what, what twenty four hours. Some of those lines and. Um, by the clock, 
um, he's going to die kind of thing. And basically, you know, the room is shattering down and all that stuff, and the music is really intense, and he kind of falls down trying to find the clock, and the clock's going tick, tick, it's going by minute, by minute, by minute kind of thing. And it's like, Jesus, what's going to happen after this clock goes down? And he wakes up back again to the hotel, um, everything's back to where he was, pictures and uh, there's no creepy stuff there's no there's nothing you know cold room or not back to original was when we first entered the room and the clock resets again giant spoiler if you're not saying i seriously apologize but it's it's very daring and um it basically they basically the room wants him to kill him yeah the whole there's been like so many different suicides in that room and basically the room puts you in hell for 24 hours and if you don't commit suicide we're going to keep putting you for this over and over and over again until you do and it's like jesus christ and uh, it's really dumb the, the horror sequences in this film are fantastic i thought really well done i like this movie a lot director's cut i thought was miles better than the theatrical version by my fantastic version yeah director's cut version i think is i don't i don't like the theatrical version ending so yeah uh yeah so 1408 i thought that was a pretty good decent uh, dream sequence you know it actually made sense the movie it wasn't kind of like a bit of a cheap way out actually worked so yeah good stuff uh there is one more one i'll talk about which um i think is just i don't own i never will is from a film called um junior i think you all may have heard of it and the dream sequence i'm not going to describe i'm simply going to show you it Physically terrifying, isn't it? <laughs> so yeah, so yeah, that's been my video response to uh, Dreams for Harman's Challenge Day Six. Hope you enjoy watching the video. In the meantime, this is Andrew from Me Wolf from Game TV. Signing out.